Good evening, everybody. This is Nick Zerker, or N4QAD, November 4, Quebec Alpha Delta. Tonight, we're going to go ahead and get digital set up on these Go boxes. We're going to go ahead and install the software, go through the major settings, and kind of explain some things on how to get this working right. So, uh, I do have this box already set up. I have it connected to an antenna, and all the power connections and everything are ready to go. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and get the signal link. Now signal link is your bridge between your computer and your radio. So there's two connections you need to make. There's only two. Um, one is radio and the other one is USB and that's going to go to your computer. So again, like I said, if this is a bridge that goes between. Uh, and tell you honestly, uh, it's, it's a pretty simple setup how this works. Um, the computer, when you install it, actually, when you connect the, the USB to the computer, it actually sends out uh, audio signals because this is nothing more than a glorified sound card. It has some extra circuitry, it has some extra pieces that make it a special sound card. But in the end, it's a sound card. Um, the, the big piece that makes this anything special is the fact that the way that it interfaces with the radio, the way that it can tell the radio to transmit. And the way that it does that is uh, what's called Vox or voice activated um, transmit. So it'll actually listen. And when your computer sends out a sound on that sound card, which is this, it will transmit and tell the radio to go ahead and um, transmit what's coming out of that stream. Uh, the signal links, um, that it's, it's, it's nice because it's easy to set up. Um, maybe not quite as nice as like the rig blasters or something along those lines, but definitely is a really nice setup for something like this. Uh, it's simple, easy to use, and you know, that's what we're looking for. So let's, uh, let's uh, quit dawdling and let's get this going with this. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and hook it up to the radio. Uh, the radio cable looks like this. It has two connectors on it. Uh, this one is going to go to the radio. This one's going to the back of the um, signal link. Um, if you look real close in the end of this guy, I don't know if you guys can see that, it's thinking about it. There it goes. Um, you see that there, that little black pin in there? in the way that this thing can only go in one way. Uh, and there's a reason, because it's the audio, it's the receive, or the transmit, the receive, and uh, the return audio, so the microphone. So if you look on here, there is an arrow right on there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not in the video, but that's all right. You're going to have to trust me, there's an arrow. That arrow needs to be up. So when you put it in, the arrow should be pointing towards you in the back of the radio. In the back of the radio, there's two ports in the back there. Um, one of them is a PC port, and the other one is the data port. I'm going to spin this guy around and see if we can see this at all. Let's zoom in and see what we have. There we go. Yeah, if you look real close, actually on the bottom you can kind of see it. Uh, it says data down there. And this one right here is the data port, this is the PC port. Um, not sure what the PC port is used for, probably some updates and everything like that, but we're going to be using the data port tonight. So again, we're going to look for the arrow up and just slide her in there. You should not have to force it. Just wiggle it back and forth and it'll go in just fine. So, uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and flip this back around and get the rest of it set up. <clears throat> there we go. All right, so now the only other thing we gotta do is go ahead and take this and plug it into here. So as you can see here, radio, um, there's a clip. Um, be careful when you're like pulling this through wires and different things. This clip right here, this plastic clip, is pretty flimsy. Um, it can be replaced, but that's a pain. So just make sure you don't catch it on something and rip it off. So you just go ahead and clip that guy in there like that. Perfect. And then the USB, same thing, it's keyed a certain way. As you can see the rounded part goes to the top. Plug her in. Alright. We're halfway to connectivity. 
that's not true. Uh, we're getting closer though. So um, go ahead and make sure the power is turned on to it. Uh, leave the radio off for now uh, as we set this up and uh, take the other end and just plug that right into the USB port. So let's go ahead and plug that guy in. There we go. So at this point, after you have it plugged in, go ahead and check the front of there and you should have a green light right here. Uh, if you don't, uh, go ahead and turn the power, press the power button in. Uh, what that does is basically the USB sound cart or the USB port actually powers this guy and what this does is says hey I'm ready to go ahead and transmit I'm, I'm allowed to PTT. The other thing I do when I start is uh, where I set these levels. So I usually set them straight up to start with set my delay to off because what we're doing today you actually don't need any delay. So we'll set that there and then we're going to go over to the computer and look at this guy and get it set up with the software. So down here um, in Windows 7 or even Windows 10 if you right click on that you have uh, some places right here playback devices or record devices it's just the sound icon down here and looking at this guy um, we now have a new sound card and that's this guy right here um, it is anything, it usually says USB audio codec. And if you look at recording, there's also another USB audio codec. Now, the not so good thing is, uh, Windows thinks, hey, this is a new sound card, you must want it selected, which we don't. So we actually want to set default the standard high definition speakers. Because remember, this is just an audio card. So anything you send out, We'll go out, let's say you pull up a YouTube video, let's, uh, you pull up a weather alert, or some other web page, or uh, a software. It will send it out via the radio, because it detects that audio, and it will send it. So instead of it accidentally doing that, we're going to go ahead back and playback and recording, and we're going to set the uh, high definition audio device, anything but the USB audio codec back you know yours may say something different it might you know say high definition it may say something else but you don't want the USB audio codec to be your default device you don't want that green check on there now I already had the software downloaded before um, I got to this point uh, I'll have the link down in the YouTube description so feel free to grab it from there it's a pretty small file uh, I think it's around 5 meg so it shouldn't take you very long when you run it for the first time it's going to start with this wizard right here um, go ahead and fill it in with your information uh, or the station that you're running from. So I was pretending that this was in Scarce 2, running as Kate said UK, and then I filled in the rest of the information as my own. So one of the things right here is the locator. Uh, that your grid square locator is what usually is in there. Um, I didn't take the time at this point to look that up. But we'll fill in the rest here. In here, the, where you want to start with is devices on the left, and you want to use port audio. And what that does is it says, go ahead and use an audio sound card. And again, we're selecting the USB audio codec, the one that we just installed and set up. Uh, in different software, it says, hey, go ahead and check this or don't check this. Uh, I usually just check it. It doesn't hurt anything that I've seen. But uh, after you get that set, check next. This next page is for actual device control. Um, we're not using device control for anything. So we can just click next and make, leave it at whatever defaults it is at this time. Again, click next or finish and we're ready to go. Now we're inside the software. All right, let's go back into the playback and recording settings. There's one of the settings we, I wanted to um, choose. The first one is with the speakers. Go ahead and change the properties and make sure that the levels for it are at 100%. So, um, yeah, if you, you see that, it should be slid all over the 100%. And then, so what that is, is you think about your speakers. You're transmitting that sound 
out of the computer into the signal link that goes into the radio. So you want that 100%. Recording is a different beast though. Uh, we want to go ahead and lessen that. So let's change the properties on that one. And we're going to go ahead and set that level to 50%. Um, <clears throat> so, and just as long as it's close, it doesn't have to be exactly right. You know, just, uh, you'll play with it over time and, you know, find out, hmm, this works or this doesn't. All right, so let's go ahead and get, uh, before you get back in there, there's one other thing I like to do. Um, I made some custom macros, uh, uh, kind of for our group, uh, you know, as we use this, trying to make things a little easier. So, I got the macros file, and I, I'll have a Dropbox link, hopefully it stays up for a little bit, that you guys can download this from. Um, or maybe I'll put it in Google, I'm not sure where I'm going to put it yet, but I'll make sure that the link is in the video. Um, that you can grab this guy, and it has some really nice settings in it to, uh, simplify setting this up. So. What you have to do is just go down here, and then whatever your name of your computer is, um, you just go ahead and open that. And then inside here, there's a folder called FL Digi Files. Go ahead and open that. And then inside here is one called Macros. Now, if you look at this one, Macros, they're the same name. Uh, so I like to keep the old one, just in case I ever want to revert it back, grab something out of it. So we'll just call it, we'll rename the one that's already in there to dash old. And then we'll drag this one in. Now when you start the software itself, it'll grab these macros, and it'll always choose macros, uh, dot MDF. So whatever is named that is what it'll choose when it starts. So that's all we need to do. Now that task is completed. Let's go ahead and open up the software. I think I got everything ready. Nope, one more thing. Let's jump back over to the radio and make sure that we have everything set up. So I went ahead and turned this on. And uh, again, we're on PTT. Uh, we gotta make sure we're on the right station. 145550, so that should be good. Uh, I'm using low power. You can change power by hitting the low button here. Now, if you're doing this, um, you'll probably run it on medium. I would never suggest you run on high. And the reason that is is because when you transmit digital, you may transmit for a minute, minute and a half straight. Well, that's fine, but you could actually even transmit longer. These radios were never meant for a 100% duty cycle. Uh, you know, they're, they're meant to transmit for a while, turn off, transmit for a while. Uh, so digital actually works them a little harder. And, and tell you the truth, even the amplifiers, they perform better at the, uh, the medium. Uh, it's a cleaner signal. If you have to use high, go for it. Just know that, you know, keep an eye on it. Feel the top of your radio, see if it's getting too hot, you know, that kind of stuff. But since my antennas are only 60 feet apart, low will be just perfect. Uh, I'm using 145550, which is uh, the District 3 digital and making sure that my PTT is on this side. So, now, back to the software. Fired it up, and across the top, um, I already did change one view, and I'm sorry, I should have done that one video, but they have a, a view hide 48 macros. I like this up here because, uh, I like it up top because you use them quite a bit. Um, the other piece I do is I get rid of the rig or log controls because we're not logging this, you know, per se inside the software. We don't have rig controls, so there's no use to have it. So let's go through a few settings and, you know, um, down here uh, we're at 1500. So just change the center to 1500 and you can actually lock it. So that's what this button, lock transmit frequency. Now you still need to pay attention down here. You see this says 1500? This is your receive frequency. So you could accidentally always transmit right at 1500, but you're actually receiving 
at 2060. So just make sure that you have it, you know, both at 1500 um, uh, in your spectrum when you're doing 2 meter. Obviously that changes depending on, you know, what frequency you are and that kind of stuff. The other thing you need to do is go ahead and come up here, op mode, and we need to choose what operational mode or codec that we're using. And what we're going to use is PSK 500R. Uh, it gives us a, a nice blend of speed, um, and the R stands for robust, so it is slower. It uses 500 um, hertz. It is slower than PSK 500, but it has some redundancy pieces built into it to help it uh, help your data be cleaner and you get exactly what you send. Um, going across the top, um, so these are um, some of the different messages and macros, I'll get to those in a minute. There is a receive RSID and a transmit RSID. Now what this does, if you have transmit RSID, before any transmission that you sent out, it has a little preamble. And in that preamble, you'll see it on the screen on the waterfall, I'll show you here in a minute. It actually sends out, hey, I'm running in PSK 500R. I'm at 1500 and things like that. So um, it, it, I think it sends, uh, I think that's it. Um, it sends out those things so that if someone has the receive ID lit, they can automatically tune to it and know, hey, this is what I need to do to listen to this signal. Because we're standardizing and we're going to be using the same codec every time, and or maybe one or two, we might have another one. Um, because we're doing it that way, there's no reason to send out that extra information every time. It also does something that drives me nuts, my OCD crazy. <laughs> it transmits it out and puts it in your message fields up here. So it keeps dropping it in there and it just clutters everything up. Uh, again, for something that's not needed, it makes the transmission times longer, not needed. Uh, so as long as you both are on the same you know, page, everybody's using the same frequencies, the same uh, codecs, you don't need it. But I do suggest you keep the RX ID on. What if uh, somebody needs to switch to something else quick? They don't have a time to tell you about it. They can enable TX ID and actually transmit their ID and you'll still receive it. So it's, it's, it's good to have um, uh, at least the RX ID on and not the transmit. The tune button, what that does is it puts out a tone and what you can do is use that to tune your receive strength on your um, radio. So you can have one person turn on the tune, the other person adjust their receive strength, and boom, they're in, they're in good shape. So you can do that and it definitely is uh, usable. What I usually do is come over to the radio and I'll turn my squelch down so I get all the static. Now what you'll see is down here at the bottom, and you see the waterfall now coming across, down here at the bottom, you see this little triangle? It's red. And what that is, is it means you're over deviating your signal. So let me turn that down a little so you guys can hear me. It means you're over deviating your signal. So come over here to signal link. Now let's pop over here and turn down your receive until that little um, triangle there's a, a little spot there's yellow so you're close red is really bad so go green and then go just a little extra and that's it now you have your receive tuned out perfect um, that's why we set it to 50% because even at 50% you still need to turn in this case the receive down a little more uh, so now that we have that set you can turn this back up now that doesn't mean you're set for life uh, keep an eye on it. Um, you'll see over here when we transmit, so watch over here on the far right hand side. In this bar there's a green level meter. And as it receives 
it will go up. Uh, so watch that over there, watch this down here. If you start to get in yellows and stuff, turn your receive down a little more. Um, you know, if you're always in greens, good job, you're perfect. Uh, and you're good to go. Alright, we have all these settings done, we're looking good. One of the things uh, I wanted to go over the last thing is before we actually start sending some data is macros. Um, I kind of made this macro up here to kind of make it easy. So I turn the lock off, I set the frequency to 1500, I set it to the right uh, codec, I make sure automatic frequency is off, make sure transmit receive SID is off, and all that stuff. So with a one click, all those things can be set. Um, just to make it easier for everybody. So, you know, obviously you want to know this stuff and what it does, but in the end, you know, once you get used to it, hmm, yeah, I just want it to work. So let's go ahead and let's transmit our first CQ. Um, we'll send it out. I'll double check everything real quick. Looks like everybody's set up and ready to go, so. So, as I set up earlier, um, CQ, CQ, CQ means, um, you know, basically, hey, I'm looking for a call from KZUK, please, and end my transmission. Um, let's actually see that again. Watch down the waterfall down here. You're going to see everything fly by. So that's the beginning of the transmission, and then the actual transmission happens here, and then it, it finishes up over here. Alright, so if you, as you're looking at this, um, I have another station set up here, so I am going to go ahead and choose this and go ahead and answer. So now that he's answered, uh, a simple double click right on the call sign will put it down this field down here. So as you answer things or go back and forth, um, it'll actually populate it based off of what it says. So in here, transmit uh, the call sign, this one, the one you selected, from my call, my call, and end, and then go back to receive mode. So, you know, he, or I did, <laughs> or let's pretend it's somebody else, he answered back, K, it's NUK, this is for QAD, over. And there's lots of other different things um, that you can do with it. Uh, uh, even if you, you can then come in here and just say, go ahead and transmit, full time. So, there's no text going across right now, it's just a transmit. And this is what I was talking about before, you know, you don't want to drag this on too long, but let's go say hello, um, my name is Nick, um, how are you this evening, we had snow. So, as you can see, all that was transmitted while I was on there. The other nice thing is, if you leave it transmitting, you see how on the, uh, the top part in the red? It actually is recognizing the backspaces. So those backspaces are being transmitted, oops, I <laughs> really did type it wrong that time, um, are being transmitted again. And then you can stop it by hitting the transmit receive, so that's a switch, or you can click down here, and that's also a switch. So there's, there's a lot of different ways to actually do this. Um, hello, my name is Nick, how are you doing this evening? And, um, you know, they can return back with, you know, QGH, um, uh, snow here too. So let's go ahead and send that. And watch the waterfall down across the bottom. Fort Miami, uh, there's Grid Square, and Better Find, it's no here too, from 
N4 QD, QAD, and um, basically back to me. So you can type back and forth. Uh, the next video I'm actually going to be covering um, FL Message, uh, which will allow you to send um, more scripted messages back and forth uh, with better logging, better ways to keep track of things. Uh, so that's pretty well it for this video. If you have anything I didn't answer, questions, comments, leave them below. Um, you know, and, and I'll try to answer them. I'll try to watch for it. Um, and you know, obviously, if you're with the club, you can get with me. If you just you know someone that saw this on YouTube, uh, feel free to leave a message or comment. I usually watch that, and I should be able to get back to you. Maybe not promptly, but I should get back to you. So, 73, have a wonderful evening. This is N4QAD.